This episode of The Honeydew is brought to you by Ritual, Upstart, and MeUndies. More on that later. Let's get into the do. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I am Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com. Ryan Sickler on all the social medias. Uh, please make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. The community there is growing and growing. Got some more stuff coming out for you here soon. But uh, don't just watch. Subscribe. It helps everybody. You know what I'm saying? Um, Patreon, also uh, a community that is blowing my mind every week, literally. Uh, the stories just keep coming in, and it's one of my favorite things to do. If you or someone you know has that story that has to be heard, Please submit your email to honeydewpodcast at gmail.com, and hopefully we get to do a story for you. And if you do sign up for a year, you'll save on over a month uh, of free episodes. So there's that. You know I record here every week at Santa Monica Music Center, so if you or someone you know needs music lessons, musical instruments, this is the spot. They do offer online lessons. Uh, if you go to santamonicamusic.com, use the code HONEYDEW, they'll waive the registration fee, and they'll give you a free lesson when you sign up for a package. All right, that's the biz. Now, you know what we do over here every week? We highlight the low lights. We like to shine a little la light on that darkness and, and laugh at it hard. All right. So this week's guest is is no stranger to the do. Uh, <laughs> the main mommy, y'all. Please welcome Christina P. Back to the honey. Right. Thank you for having oh, me. Come on. Get out of here with the thank you for having me. Thank but, you for doing it. But I must correct Queen. you. Your grammar was incorrect. You What'd said subscribe to Patreon. I think it's prescribe. Prescribe. I'm yeah. sorry. Sometimes I try to get Pacific and I fuck my words up, you know? So <sighs> by the you. way, I know we yeah. record a little early, but this Sunday I want to say happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> That's this Sunday. I hope you and Tommy are ready for Valentine's. We love Valentine's. We get each other cards. We write each other poetry. Can you even... I hate it so much, that holiday. Do you do anything? I just do it for my daughter because she likes it, but it's, it's bullshit. You yeah, know what I mean? It's, it's just... A, uh, yes, of course. I, I make... I make My daughter, one of her favorite things is Pischetti, so I Pus make her... <laughs> I make her... <laughs> I make her Valentine's Pischetti. Yeah. Uh, back in the day, yeah. we would go to the library when that was open, but you can't even do that now. No, you know? and it was so a blessing in the skies to be able way up there. God, there was another one I wrote down just for you. <laughs> you know, for a while, I had a... <laughs> Let's just do these for a minute because my brother called me with one one time, and he said he was at the grocery store in Baltimore, and uh, the checker lady's checking this guy out. This homeless dude comes in every day. Every day, he steals Hot yeah. Pockets. It's his thing. It's his thing. And he every day, they bust pockets. them, and they take them back to the fucking freezer it. section. And one day, the lady just looks at my brother, and she goes, he can't help it. He's he's artistic. <laughs> And my brother started like, he called me, but he's getting out of line. I go, well, if he was artistic, he'd have been stealing crayons, all right? I, mean, I don't know what autistic has to do with the fucking the hot finger and hot yeah. pockets, but get the fuck out of here. Artistic. Artistic. Uh, oh, oh, my favorite, too, is uh, the car to, or, or to wash something. All right. You got to wash it. I used to say it all the time. No, you didn't. You know I did. That's a Baltimore thing? I won't say it's a Baltimore thing, but it does seem to be a mid-Atlantic thing. Like, I can listen to people because I used to say, this is exactly how it happens. The Wash. same way I, I realized wrestling was fake. Uh-oh. All right? When my dad one time said to me, hey, you think this is real? And I'm like, yeah, it's real. everything. He was I'm like, yeah, I mean, the hits, you know, all that shit. And he goes, if you and I are wrestling and I throw you against the ropes, what would you do? I go, well, you know what I'd do? I'd grab the fucking ropes. I wouldn't bounce off that shit for you to hit yeah. me. He goes, he goes, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> think you're the first person to ever think of that shit right there? And I was like, oh, fuck. And that's when it really dawned on me. Like, oh, yeah. Why would you just wildly bounce off some ropes to get a boot in the face? Yeah, it's so dumb. And, <laughs> and was, like, that, oh. uh, was that a life-changing moment? Because I wouldn't say it was a life-changing moment, but it's a moment I, I realized, like, you don't know everything. You're yeah. you're nine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, get off your little high ass horse. Yeah. And fucking shut up and learn a little bit. Maybe you should pay attention to adults. Even though I still didn't take my own advice, I fucked up enough. Yeah, it's funny you say that because, but there are pi <laughs> like pivotal moments in your young life that change, like they shift. I remember the first time. I understood a dirty joke. Yeah. Like my dad had those truly tasteless joke books in the toilet and I would memorize them and just spit them out not knowing. And then like one day I remember like being like 10 or 11 and being like, 
oh, that's what a Jewish joke is? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, Polak that's jokes, what a po- – Yeah. Baby jokes. Yeah. Oh, those books wouldn't even be printed today. <laughs> they would not even be printed today. No. They'd be like, what the fuck? Uh-uh, no. <laughs> Helen Keller jokes. <laughs> Helen all of, Keller, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Or like a baby with no arms. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, what do you call a dog with no legs? Stay. Cigarette. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cigarette. <laughs> yeah, he had a dog named Cigarette, and every day he'd take him out for a drag. That's from Truly Tasteless. Uh, oh, right, like so, why, why did the Jews <clears throat> wander in the desert for 40 why? years? Somebody dropped a quarter. And, yeah, that yeah. Was, yeah, But yeah, those yeah. are good jokes. The structure is good. The writing is solid. Okay, yeah. the the setup punch, the left turn is it's, it's you know good quality it's good. shit. The, the the content you know today, <laughs> even back then maybe not so much. Yeah. But um, all right. Yeah, so yeah, real yeah. quick, sure. Let's get back to Pacific. Specifically, please promote anything you'd like. You got some shows okay. coming up this I do. weekend on. Yeah, weekend after Valentine's. After Valentine's, because you know it's so important to Tom and I. We like to take the whole take weekend, that weekend down yeah. and just gaze into each other's eyes. Yeah. Um. So Feb. Feb. I'm sorry. February. Right. February. Nobody says it that way. No. They should. February. Could you imagine being in a silent <laughs> R? You know what I mean? That's your whole purpose is to be a silent Why? R. Is it really silent? Or are you supposed to say February? We're all probably trash saying it incorrectly, but it is spelled February. Yeah. So You're supposed to hit it, hit it like lightly. You know what I mean? Just like bounce <laughs> off of it. February. Feb- February. Yeah. February. But you say it like that. February 25th through 27th. <laughs> You talk all funny too. I don't know what Who you Who talks mean. funnier, you or me though? I wonder. <laughs> you. I say shit wrong constantly. Do you know that I said com- combative wrong for like 43 years? How did you say it? Combative? Com- yeah. Okay, I do that Such with. You're a fucking idiot. I do that with. Oh, God. What's the. <laughs> see, this is my. What do I do that with? Um, limited. Li- limited. I, throw extra t- I can't say. I have to slow down to say limited. Limited. So say your word again. Combative, Com- but you used to say combative. Yeah, because my parents are foreigners, and that's how I, that's how they said it, and that's how I learned to speak. I'm just from trash, so <laughs> I don't have the Same part. Difference. I'm limited. I used to say, limited. I used to say radiator. Growing up, I, we called it a Rad- radiator instead of a radiator. A radiator. Oh, we, and we you forgot say, wash. I'm gonna oh, get, wash. Yeah. Plug your thing because I, oh, I said wash. Twenty fifth yes. through twenty seventh, February at the Houston Improv. Houston Improv. Houston. Yeah, Houston. Houston. How come it's Houston in New York? In Houston, everywhere else, it's rodeo, but it's rodeo. rodeo. Doesn't make any sense. Money. Yeah, money. That's fancy. But I would say wash wash all the time. Washer and dryer. Wash my clothes. Washington (laughs) D.C. Washington State or Washington, like where our capital is. And everyone said it growing up. And I think I don't know. I think I was out here in my late twenties, and somebody one day goes, "What'd you say?" And I said, (laughs) "Wash." And they're like. Wash, spell it. And I go, W-A-S-H. And they go, where's the R? And I went, huh? And then I was like, where's the R? There's no R in there. Yeah. And then it blows your mind. And I really worked on, I do no longer say wash. I have busted my ass not to say wash. Wash, I'm sure there's a million things I say incorrectly as an Angelino. You know, because I do have the Valley Girl, like, oh, my God. Like, I still have People that. People hate that shit. Dude. I love it, though. Bro. I grew and, up with it, yeah. Yeah, I kind of like it, too. But I don't know. I guess when I move to Texas, I'll see how stupid I sound to them. You'll get a bunch of y'alls down there. It won't be the dudes and the bros. It'll be the y'alls. Hey, y'all. I'm practicing. And then they say, bless her heart a lot. When Instead of calling Karen a cunt, you'll be like, well, bless her heart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is a lot nicer. Because it's not what they're doing. They're like, you're just saying that person's an idiot. Yeah. You, but you say, oh, bless her heart. It's you're a little a handsome woman. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my mother used to say. Bless She'd say, don't say a woman is ugly. You say a woman is homely. 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 And I'm like, but isn't Hurts that- Hurts more. Yeah, that's meaner <laughs> than- Hurts more, yeah. But what was your word you said? Handsome. Handsome yeah, woman. You don't hear she people said, call women handsome. Nor do they call boys husky. Remember husky? Not anymore, but they used to have a department <laughs> for it. And fucking Sears, it was on the back wall. Husky, all on the back wall. You're like, hey, we're going back. I'm not fat, I'm husky. I'm just getting snow clothes. <laughs> I need them in bigger sizes, okay? My mom, I want to buy them every year, all right? <laughs> husky was like late 70s. 80s, no right? Doubt. You were yeah. husky. So this is what I wanted to do today. I've never yeah. done this before, but okay. I had this idea, and I thought I'd like to sit and talk <laughs> to you and share trauma mm-hmm. that, like, I'm going to give an example just so we know what we're doing. Are we doing here, a like. lightning round? Are we matching? We don't have to at all. <laughs> I, I'm just curious. Um, 
there are certain moments, certain sentences, certain mm. things that were said in my childhood. People come up to me and say, well, one time you said this to me. I'm like, I don't remember saying that at all. So I don't know that any of these people even remember or even know I heard, but it affected me in a way. So I wanted to go um, just back and forth with you on some <laughs> some trauma moments that Got have shaped right our bullshit. And this pad is this, if you're thinking of them as we go, please, feel free to write it down. <laughs> Yeah. Let's go. We I um, so I recently had um a f- my, when I first lived in a house in Maryland, we lived across the street from this kid named Sean Flander. He and I are still friends, but at first we were not friends. He would come over and play, and he was a year older. And back then, a year older is a lot stronger, and he would beat the shit out of me. <laughs> and I remember this time <laughs> we're playing baseball in the yard, and I said. Um, that was stupid. And he goes, say it to me again. And I go, that was stupid. And that was stupid because Sean Flannery came over and beat the fuck out of me. And I, mm-hmm. I remember going in and being like, and, and to my dad, couldn't breathe or whatever. He's like, Jesus Christ. So he goes out. He's like, what are you guys doing out here? He's like, don't, he, he basically was like, don't beat my kid up on my yard. That's basically, he's like, I mean, you know what I mean? He's stepping out. Take him over to your house. Yeah. I'm trying to watch the fucking game, you know? So Sean would do this. And my dad told me, he's like, It'll stop when you make it stop. Mm-hmm. You fight your brother all the time. Put some of that on him. Don't be so scared. You took his best. Give him some. So I start fighting back. And there was a, a day where, and I've told this story. I climbed up on top of my grandmother's Buick, and I Jimmy snooked this motherfucker and you beat what? the fuck out of him. Jimmy Superfly snooked That goes back to the wrestling yeah, days. Yeah, sorry. He's a murderer, we found out. Years later. You guys would love that. Th- it what? turns out he killed his, an ex or something. What? But decades later, they found out. But back then, he was king of wrestling. So, damn. You know, I've told that story and it sounds very far fetched. And just a few days ago, I get this text. Oh, my God. This text is, or excuse me, this instant message is from his son. Hey, sorry for bothering you, but my dad, Sean Flannery, told me that you jumped off a van onto him. And I think it's the funniest (laughs) shit ever. I just want to say thank you for that story. Okay. And I wrote back, You're not bothering me at all, man. I'm glad I saw this. Your dad's fibbing a little bit. It wasn't a van, it was my grandma's Buick. I Jimmy snook at his ass. And he wrote back, like, (laughs) Oh my God, this is the greatest. Thank you so much. So I. Look, I I know bullying shouldn't happen. It, it, it this we didn't have to worry about online bullying and all that back in the day, but I I firmly believe that a good old-fashioned punch in the fucking mouth yeah, from bro. a stranger yeah, that bro. doesn't give a fuck about you <laughs> is fantastic for you in the long run. I really firmly I, believe it. I could not agree more. And I will tell you today, this is going to sound horrible too. Thank you, Sean Flannery. Thank you, Sean and Flannery. And Buick, proud sponsor of the Huntington. But a lot of these assholes out there that are making demands, uh, how do I put this? These Karens. Yeah, or just like- We need a fucking chick on the other side to just punch those bitches in the no, fucking face. No, It'll stop quicker. No, no, no. This is what I'm talking about. This anonymous Twitter culture- where you can say what you want and there are no repercussions. You can try and ruin somebody's livelihood. You, you can. People have, yeah. Right. For sure. Anonymously. And these are people, this is a generation of people who have never had a Sean Flannery punch him in the fucking mouth for being out of line. That's right. And I've gotten my ass beat from being a loud mouth too. There's a, I did a story on Comedy Central. You can see it there. Rosina Johnson beat the shit out of me for telling her to shut the fuck up in the locker room, so I won't say it here. It's online. But uh, <laughs> uh, but I learned really quickly to to fight. And, or don't say anything. That's the other don't thing. Don't say yes. it, dipshit. Do you know how many times somebody after that said, say that again? Do you know how many times I did? <laughs> None. I batted a thousand after that. I, if somebody ever said, say that shit to me one more time, I was like, well, shut the fuck up. Because I have Sean Flannery flashbacks. Yeah. Like, I don't need to say it again. What's going to come up? And unless I know I can take you, then I'll fucking be like, I said. You know, then <laughs> then you're like, oh, okay, Ryan thinks he's got this guy. But if I'm like, come on, kids, if we get out. Well, how, how, <laughs> old, it. how old are you with Sean Flannery? That shit was like second, third grade. It was so early. you learned fast. Very fast. Yeah. So there was this boy uh, in element, elementary. elementary. Is how Josh Potter says it. Elementary school. Um, Sounds like he rode the short bus right past the elementary <laughs> school. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but this motherfucker, <laughs> this kid Eric was like, skinny he was skinnier than me and he, I, they always say that when little boys like you they torture you at that age like in third grade 
I'm not so sure. I think he was just an asshole. And my parents are Eastern Blocky, so like when I came home complaining that I was being bullied, the first thing they did was like, okay, we put you in karate class. You're going to fuck this guy up. And that was their response. Like now it's like go to school and talk to the other teacher or whatever. Talk to the teacher. No, dude. So like I took karate and I remember when he would fuck with me. How long? Not long. Bro, like one weekend. (laughs) And I came back and I was like, what's up, Eric? You motherfucker. Got my white belt, (laughs) man. Like I could do nothing. But all I knew was to kick him in his dick. That's Fuck what yeah. you do. You kick him in the nuts. Eyes, go for eyes. Yeah. Anything that hurts. Permanent. And he, he came when he he would he would tease me. He called me Mrs. Pants because I wore pants a lot to school. Did he I was not a know tomboy. You were Mrs. Motherfucking jeans. This <laughs> I know I'm not in the jeans. <laughs> what? Was he psychic? How about he planted a seed? He planted Damn. a seed, a pant seed. That yeah. you grew into jeans. I did grow into How jeans. How about it? But I, I guess because I was like not a girly girl. I was more of a tomboy. So he was like fucking with me. And then I just kicked him right in his dick one day. And that shit stopped completely. Like, yeah. Right? And yeah. that's the end of it. That's it. It's over. Isn't that wild? Just standing up for yourself. Even not doing a great job of it. Like even when Rosina would fuck with me. Just the fact that I tried to hit her back. Put a stop to the whole thing. Yes. Just try. That's what most of them want is an easy target, someone that's not yeah. going to fight back. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't that's think of it. That's what they want. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what they are, wherever they're getting that in their life. Oh, Whether it's their right. dad or their stepdad or their older brother or an uncle or even their mom beating the shit out of them, they're, they can't defend themselves. So they want that so they can take that shit. That's my oh, belief, at least. That's so that's sad. That's what the bully is. Yeah. God, that's so sad. I never thought of it that way. Um, all right, here's another one okay, that I ahead. heard I, one I night that yeah. really rocked me. When yeah, my, yeah, this yeah. is when my new, like this is probably fifth grade. Our parents have told us now that they're separating. They had had problems since third grade when my mom cheated on my dad, and then it just got rocky from there. And then we're now about to move out of the f- best house ever. You know, the beginning of the end of your life, yeah. And I'm sorry, we already had moved, and we're into – the new house. This is sixth grade, sixth grade. But they're still arguing. They had just split and got back together. And I remember hearing my dad yell, you haven't had sex with me in six months. And I was like, oh, man. And listen, I don't even think I had lost my virginity at that point. But I was masturbating, and I just thought, six months, and I don't ever get to, nah, fuck that. I'm like, get it, Dad. I didn't even know what it was, you know? And I just, (laughs) but that stuck with me. That has stuck with me, and I... I think a positive mm. way to not be a selfish lover, to make sure someone understands that, yeah, I, I'll hold your hand and support the fuck out of you, and we're out here doing this, PTA, cupcakes, all that, but this is still a necessity back here, too, and I, I take mm. that very seriously. Like, you know, Dr. Drew out there banging nightly, I don't know about yeah. that, whatever, I mean, <laughs> you know, okay. Yeah, every <laughs> night they do. I know, it's yeah. nuts. Yeah, my mother was very too open with me about her sex life. Both my parents were way too open. In what way? They would just just bringing it around you and talking to you about it or just shoving it in your face? Well, okay, so in my dad's house, he's like the, you know, slanging dick. Like, he's just the Lothario of the San Fernando Valley. It's like, I was at nightclubs with him on the the school night, bro. Like, (laughs) I would... Like, he just partied, you know? So he wouldn't give me a babysitter. How old are we talking This here? is nine years old. Nine? Nine and on a school night. And you're in San Fernando Valley nightclubs yeah. in the 80s when yeah. cocaine was fucking yeah. everywhere. And yeah. Canoga Park. We used to go to Canoga Beef and Barrel. Park. It was called the Beef and Barrel. Beef and Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> it was right next to the Summer House or the Velvet Turtle, I believe. I don't know any of those yeah. places. I know Canoga Park. Yeah, no longer here, but it's on <laughs> near the Topanga Mall now. And the beef and barrel, because his friend DJed there, this other Hungarian guy, and we would go, and I would dance with sailors, like sailors. I'm talking men in uniforms, and they would that Moni Moni song would come on. Mm-hmm. Here she come now, and then there's a chorus that sailors sing. They go, "Hey, hey motherfucker, get, get laid, get, get fucked." fucked. Yeah. And I would, ch- I, here I am, like doing that, Nine. like chiming in, and I'm like, "This is the best <laughs> time ever!" Out. Yeah, Let's like, "Hey, motherfucker, get laid, get fucked." Coloring at school the next yeah. day, humming that to yourself. Yeah, <laughs> and like white lines. I was like, "Dude, a song about coloring? This is dope!" Like I didn't <laughs> even. I was so young, you know. 
Uh huh. So that was my dad, and like it was just women, always women. There was like women from Africa, women from Asia, women from women, women with with drug dealer ex husbands who were after them, and it was constant. I remember one time this African woman; she was so beautiful. Um, she was naked in our pool, and she was doing like backward somersaults in the pool. And I remember seeing her vag like pop up out of the water, like just see. That's pe- what I'm talking about. You yeah, remember you that, remember, huh? yeah. and you're like that lady today has no idea, <laughs> no idea. you ever saw her vag or anything, but you saw it and it stuck with you. It's, Why? What yeah, did that do to you? Because I was never it shocking. Yeah, because I never seen like like a vag in the air like that that was your first time seeing a vagina no. like, other than your own no i saw no. my mother's okay. but my mother's was like a fire crotch and my mother was very vi- vaginal centric too like she always had a big douche bag under her sink and like <laughs> she was oh so gross and she was always telling me like you know men don't like women with stinky pussy and like she was so forward <laughs> that is so like i can't imagine saying that to my daughter what well, yeah <laughs> I can't imagine. Yeah, but that any, stuck with me, yeah, and then I'm sure that would, yeah. that's the kind of shit that'll cause insecurity like a motherfucker forever. Forever. Like, oh my god, is my pussy? Stinking? Yeah. Oh my, god, oh my god, my mom said. My mom yeah. said. Oh, I said <laughs> Everywhere you go. Yeah. To the doctor. To yeah. The, yeah. So I'm yeah. I'm, I'm hyper vigilant. I'm like, yeah. is my fucking vagina okay? Is this sinking? <laughs> um, and she would tell me about men, like you know, Christica men. <laughs> Oh, oh, this was her favorite too. Like, marriage is a business arrangement. There is no love in marriage. You only marry rich men. You can love a poor man. No, you love a rich man as much as you love a poor man. And I think that's deliberately why I married like a broke ass comic. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I married for love. And thank God things turned out well for us. Mm-hmm. But now I rejected if that. If you'd have married for money, it wouldn't have worked out well for you. You'd be miserable, all that bullshit. I don't, yeah. yeah, like I don't know. I don't know. I, that Your intentions can't be good. If you're no. leading with that, that's that's yeah, not the no best way. thing to lead with. But that stuck with me. But the woman's, the black Listen, vagina, I'm with clean the pussy, but you, yeah. you know. <laughs> you know Marry for love. But my mom was right. Clean men, your pussy, but marry yeah, for love. Yeah, men don't like Nobody likes the dirty <laughs> pussy. <laughs> <laughs> women don't like a dirty pussy. It's not like there's women out there like, I'll eat that shit. No. No. I mean, there are, but. And then like my dad would do odd things. He drank a lot. And I just, this is, this is an odd one too. For some, so he had a forklift business and he would trade goods sometimes for forklift services. And one time this chapstick company gave him a box of chapstick and my dad methodically, just on his dresser, took every single one of them and put them out. So there were like, I don't know, like a hundred chapstick just on the, I know, I'm like, what are you? St- sitting out? Just sitting out, lined up. And that's another one where you're like, oh gosh, that just, that's such an odd thing to do, but fun. That was a little fun one. And then his, um, he had a naked lady Rubik's Cube. <laughs> Yeah, did your dad ever have one of those no. under the bar? Like under the bar, there's like a naked, and you'd have to put the naked ladies together. That kind of shit, where you're like, Oof. is that what it is to be a woman? Like, I remember one time I was at my aunt's house. We're in the city, and um, she had this little home. And in the back of the house is this little row home, just basically a tunnel, you know. And in the back, there's a little kitchen window that looks out into the alley. And on that kitchen window was this little plastic monk. <laughs> you know, and I didn't know what the fuck it was, and uh, you could see its neck at a thing. So I hit the head, and this dick flies out of the fucking <laughs> road. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like ten, you know what yeah, I mean? I'm you're like, like, what? The what? Fuck? <laughs> so my cousin Jennifer, who's a couple years younger than me, I'm like, and she's like, what? And I hit the thing, and the dick flies out. Our fucking uncle sees it and starts yelling. He's like, "What are you doing? Showing a young girl that kind of thing?" I go, <laughs> "You got it on the windowsill." My dad came in. It's like, "Yeah, you got it on the window." I'm like, "It's on the windowsill, bro." <laughs> like I'm hitting the thing. I didn't know a dick was gonna come out of the road. <laughs> I did the second time. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't the first time. But wasn't that fun to find those like forbidden treasures when you were a kid? You're did like, you know oh. anyone that had the ceramic titty cup? Oh I know yeah, a lot of people that yeah. have the ceramic titty yes. cups, and I'm like, do you really drink out of that? Like, it's yeah. just for show. I feel like my dad's friends, because he he had like these old Hungarian, like you know, it's a funny joke. It's a titty cup. Like they would think that was really, really funny. Yeah, gross shit like that. 
But to now, as a as a parent, you're like, that's not good to have around. I couldn't imagine having a <laughs> titty cup out around the house right now. You know, no, I couldn't imagine it. No, there's so many cuss words and songs. Like I don't even bother anymore. I just tell Stella, look, they're adult words. Yeah, you're smart enough. You don't ever say them around other adults or in school. Don't get in trouble with it. We don't have a problem. That's yeah. It. That's it. What that's am I going to do? I, this is the real world. You're not allowed to say that shit. Yeah. I tell Ellis, I'm like, they're not bad words. They're just not good words to use in public. You'll get as in trouble. Kid. Yeah, as a yeah, kid. As when a you're kid. 16, you can cuss all the fuck you want. you want. Yeah. Um. So fights, sex. There's a lot of sex. So. Do you remember the first time you stood up to your parents? Oh, my God. I mean, I just hated them so much from so early. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I always say, like, you mean as a teenager? Anytime. It's different with me because there was a lot, there was repercussions. Like, if I told my mom I hated her, she would kick me out. (laughs) (laughs) So you had to to watch what you said. Yeah, so I had to be, and then I turned, like, 12, 13, and I just fucking would let loose. I was screaming all the time. I hated them. Like, I couldn't wait to get out, you know? But a particular, I just feel like it was constant with me. I've hated them since I can remember. Like, I hated being there. I hated, like, why, you got one? No, I, I did too. But, yeah, I finally had my blew my stack and I fought back, physically fought back against my mom. No shit. Yeah, I couldn't take it anymore. I just, you know, every day of it, you just finally, you, you can't take it. So we're in seventh grade. Um, Actually, I think we're in ninth grade. And our fr- that was two times. I'm sorry. The first time was seventh grade. We're we're at home. We've got the Coleco Vision on. My my neighbor, my buddy, still good friends with him. Chris Lamb is over, and he's sitting there. And my mom's just yelling at me and yelling at me. You know, it was the kind of thing like if you just put your shoes, it's just riding you about everything, and you're a piece of shit. You know, just loser. And I'm just like, uh, you know. And she starts, you know, shoving me around, and she hits me. And I stand up and I just shove her to shove her off me. Well, what I didn't know is that the ottoman was right behind me. <laughs> and my mother's dead. <laughs> and I gave her a good shove. <gasps> and she lost her balance. And I'm going to tell you, like, in a moment that should have been pure joy for fighting back for yourself, <laughs> yeah. I suddenly, as I saw her lose her balance and go back, I just, I couldn't even enjoy it. I was like, I'm going to be fucking dead. And, well, what if she got paralyzed or and, something? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Anything could have it. And the, the tower <laughs> toppled, and down she goes. And I'm like, oh, my God. And my friend Chris is sitting there, and he's just like, oh, my God. My friend just pushed his mom over. Like, he gets the fuck out. She calls my dad, and it's just a shit storm. And then uh, in ninth grade, uh, one time we're driving But wait, but home. she wasn't hurt. Like, no, she, she just, just – Her pride was hurt. But I'll tell yeah. you, here's the, here's the thing that happened. My mom used to do shit like, and I'm telling you, this is, we used to have this mug, a plastic little mug, and it was a Christmas mug originally, and it was a plastic mug like back in the day, and it had a little, it was a Santa Claus, and had a little, uh, a red lid on it, like his hat that would go up to a point and had a straw in it, (laughs) okay? But the lid was long gone, so we would just use the cup, and I'd drink my Kool-Aid out of it or whatever, and I would leave it in the sink, and she would get Uh tired of us leaving cups in the sink. Yeah. And one day she just doesn't say anything, and I, I'm sitting there, and this cup comes flying by my fucking head, and I'm like, "Whoa!" But I'm playing little league now, and I'm getting bigger and stronger. <laughs> and I pick that cup up, and purposely I miss her, but I throw it and shatter it against these fucking cabinets, and I went, "Yeah, <laughs> playing baseball now." And that was the end of the cup throwing. That was yeah. the end of fucking with me for a while. Ninth grade, um, we're driving home and. I'm sure at this point now, I'm not the, you know, I'm not the nicest to her anymore. I'm now 14 yeah. years of abuse, like, or 10 yeah. years of it. Like, fuck you. Why I'm would not going to be? be nice to you. Yeah. So she's saying something about not making us dinner, and she's going to go exercise. And I'm like, yeah, because you're a caribou. And I start calling her a caribou. And I'm just, I'm making this noise that I don't even know if caribous make. You know, I'm like, Ooh, I don't even know if they do that. Why did they you might. pick a caribou? I don't know. Because I thought in the comedy world, the the C is funnier. It than, is. Yeah. But a caribou is so specific. Very specific. That's the other thing about comedy. You should yeah. be specific. Yeah, it was, it's left no fucking, <laughs> you know, question about what I thought you were. Size, everything. So we get home. 
and we're walking in the house, and she turns around, and she closed fist punches me in my face, right? So I take her keys, and it's winter. Snow's all over the ground. I snap this fucking keychain, and I just <laughs> throw those keys everywhere. And they drop in the snow. You know, you know, I'm like, good luck finding those, motherfucker. So I go in, and I'm playing video games with my brother. She's out there for a good 45 minutes looking for her keys or whatever. And then my dad calls the next day, and he's like, Hey, can I talk to you about something? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, did you call your mother a caribou? I go, yeah, I did. <laughs> he goes, listen, do not tell her I'm telling you this, but mm. she didn't know what one was and called me to ask me what it was. And I was like, she punched me in my fucking face. Yeah, that's the important it detail. Been, it could have been something that wasn't so bad. You know what I mean? I mean, it was. Punched me in my fucking face. He's like, yeah, man, we got to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, your dad said rap. that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My mother um, was physically shitty, but, like, she would dig her nails into my arm when I was a little kid, like, like that kind of stuff. Uh, and she used to chase me with a wooden spoon, which is a very, like, old school Euro thing. And I remember, I, I don't know, I fucking pissed her off. I was a little kid. And we had this stupid coffee table, you know, like a long, narrow. And I remember, like, it, I, I was running around it trying to get away from her so she couldn't hit me. And then I jumped over it, and she put her leg over it, too, and she got stuck with her legs like oh, this. And I was oh. like, yeah, <laughs> you fucking bitch. Like, I was so. I Clean was your so, pussy while you're yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you fucking bitch. You fucking so bitch. that was, like, cool. I mean, like, my dad, <laughs> one time I came home all spun out on drugs and he backhanded me and that one was kind of like he actually hit you is that the first time no <laughs> no but my no that's what i'm saying by fight back did you ever raise a hand back in, no in defense of the physical abuse no i put like a book in my pants because i saw it in a cartoon one time when he came to spank me <laughs> in your ass like you couldn't see yeah, it. yeah like he i put a book there and then of course he felt it and took the book out you know but i wasn't i was more like mind games like with my mom it was more about mind games like finding ways to make her feel like shit felt better like i wouldn't correct her english a lot i let her say shit wrong all the time like alufolia and all that I'd be like yeah it's fucking alufolia for aluminum foil, aluminum foil? Yeah, yeah yeah um i don't know, like one guy she was dating she dated this chiropractor one time she was all proud because he had money and he would jog in those like fucking gas jogging shorts you know what i'm talking about like from the 80s like those dolphin fucking yeah super gay right and he would like fucking jog and i'm like we're eastern blockers dude like we don't jog like we run from shit yeah yeah, like (laughs) we don't fuck you're jogging bro (laughs) and like this guy would jog and then and then i remember he um we'd finish a meal and he'd open a can of coke and then put it in his mouth and do this with coke oh With the Coke, bro. That's disgusting. It's disgusting. It is. And I go to my mother, and she was going to marry this guy. And I go, I go, you lay that guy? That's what I said. And I remember, like, the it just a shame washed over her. And I was like, I got you, you fucking bitch. Like, I was, like, 12, and I kind of was learning. And then she didn't marry him. She married a, a criminal after that. But it was good. I got her there. I know I shamed her. And you never had... Okay, so your mom and dad both rolled through a lot of partners. Yeah. Were you, prior to Tom, were you a relationship girl or did you date a bunch? Relationship girl. I was too afraid to even fuck with, like, dating. I couldn't. I was too traumatized. And I'd seen it too much with my parents to. So you thought if you found one, then I better hold on because it's a fucking crazy world out there. Yeah, I didn't have the emotional resilience to go through the rejection of dating. I think it's very heartbreaking isn't it like oh yeah like the constant like i had sex with this person and now they're not calling me like i cannot i have a kid with this person <laughs> <laughs> wait were you were you promiscuous as a oh result God, of your yeah, yeah. i mean as, i'm sure as a result of a bunch of things but for sure i was promiscuous but also i look i didn't get love at all from you know, my mom. So I looked for it in every form possible, Same. whether it was my grandma right, right. like loving me or a friend's mom being motherly or girls I was dating having sex or even just 
dating a bunch, whatever it was, I was always looking for a, a woman's approval or Aww. acceptance is a better word. Not approval, but acceptance for sure. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. Well, I was blessed in that, like, <clears throat> I had a wonderful boyfriend in high school who was so sweet and nurturing. That was the good part about dating goth boys is that they were very in touch with their feelings and really sweet. So I was That's really lucky. Yeah. yeah like yeah. I didn't get I wouldn't see a goth guy and think sweet. <laughs> I really don't think well, I would. Like, they're like chicks, sucks. you know? They're like, they're. we've shared eyeliner and lipstick and like, um, they're sensitive. Boy, they listen to Morrissey and, you know, so it was really a blessing in the skies that I hooked <laughs> up with. <laughs> it was an organic use of that. I know, it was beautiful. Uh, yeah, and I, you know, up until Tom, more or less, I dated like more alty guys. Tom is my first like alpha football sandwiches blowjobs. Well, jobs, I go back to you. you know? With the Asian, the Asian guy. guy, he was my first normal. Sorry, he was more normal. That was the guy I remember before Tom. Yeah, sorry. And that was a. I mean, I feel like that was at least a couple years, right? A minute. Four years. Four. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm a serial monogamous. Yeah, you are. So that guy was actually my first normal. Sorry. Yeah, goth guys up until him, and that guy was amazing too. Like he's super sweet, really nice guys. I was really blessed that way, that I only had one or two turds in the boyfriend uh, bunch. I don't know how I escaped that. I think I I channeled my chaos into career uh, more Man. than private life. Yeah, stand up is probably the worst job one can do uh, for stability. No doubt. Yes. Yeah. Emotional, financial, all of it. Physical. It's horrendous. So that's where I I like that feeling that ooh that delicious instability comes mm -hmm. in the professional world. Stack all the odds <laughs> and let's go. Yeah. I'm gonna go for that. Oh, okay. Something's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And well, I didn't want to laugh all the way going down. Well, and I I was so fucked up. I couldn't be in a regular nine to five setting. I was getting fired all the time. I wasn't happy. I was, I was a wildling, man. That's the only way. Right. I mean, don't you agree? You, yeah. You're not. You're too fucked up, man. The world is. I mean, I did it for a long time Oof. only because I had to. But I, yeah, same thing. It was always some bullshit. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to be doing it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. But I was also that guy. I would go on a job interview. Yeah. I remember going on this job interview. It was for uh, SoapNet. Oh, yeah, Back, I this remember was, that. This was forever ago. And um, I had just come off a job that I had just, you know, treated like shit, work long hours, all that. And I go sit down for the interview, and the guy's like, uh, and he's got this other resume on the table, and I know that guy. <gasps> and I just think that's so unprofessional to have somebody else's shit out when you're coming in for your interview. It should be about you. You shouldn't know that this guy you know is also coming in, too, you know, unless I talk to him. Yeah, it's, it's not polite. And he starts asking me about this guy, and I was like, well, I'm here to talk about me, like, just right away, because I honestly <laughs> didn't really care if i got this fucking job yeah and um i go look i'll work hard i have no problem busting my ass for you but i'm not gonna sit around from six to nine while you're at dinner wanting waiting for me to make your lower thirds and you yeah. know two frames bigger and shit yeah. like that like i'm yeah. not i'm not your guy so if that's what you want then get somebody else because i heard he was like that like I'll go to dinner with my family, and at eight thirty, I'll get back to you and be like, "Okay, yeah, make that font one size bigger, and you guys can go." Like, fuck you. So I got so sick of working for everybody else; it took me forever. But now I just work for me, so mm -hmm. that's the biggest difference. And I've got, you know, all the time in the world to homeschool. So what a blessing in disguise! <laughs> what a blessing in the sky. I know. Let's take a quick break and tell you about our first sponsor, Ritual. Now, we deserve to know what we're putting in our bodies and why, especially when it comes to something we take every day. Ritual's clean, vegan-friendly multivitamin is formulated with high-quality nutrients in bioavailable forms your body can actually use. What you won't find are sugars, GMOs, major allergens, synthetic fillers, and artificial colorants. Plus, the fresh taste and delayed release capsule design make taking your vitamins easy. Look, they sent me some. I've been looking for a new multivitamin. I started reading up on these things. They're talking about, I just mentioned fillers, like garbage in these things. And what I like knowing is what I'm putting in my body. And they definitely have a refreshing little taste to them. Uh, they are the multi 
multivitamin reimagined. I've loved them so far. A multivitamin should contain key nutrients and forms your body can actually use to help fill gaps in the diet. There's no shady extras. Ritual's delayed release capsule design delivers high quality nutrients, including vitamin D3 in just two daily pills. Ritual is made traceable. You'll always know what nutrients you're taking and where they come from thanks to Ritual's one-of-a-kind visible supply chain. Ritual is designed with your life stage in mind. Now, here's what you got to do. Get your key nutrients without the BS. Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash honeydew to start your ritual today. Again, that's ritual.com slash honeydew to start your ritual today. Our next sponsor is Upstart. Last year showed us that you never know what life is going to throw at you. And if you used credit cards at all, like a lot of us, to pay for unexpected expenses, it can be overwhelming to manage that debt. Take control with Upstart so you know exactly what to expect. Upstart is the fast and easy way to get a personal loan to pay off your debt all online. So whether it's paying off credit cards or consolidating high interest debt or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple fixed monthly payment. Upstart finds smarter rates with trusted partners because they assess more than just your credit score. With a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rate up front for loans from $1,000 to $50,000. You can get approved the same day and you can receive your funds as fast as one business day. If debt is taking over your life, it's time to get a fresh start with Upstart. Now look, I know a lot of you used it. You've used it. They keep coming back. We love them here at The Do. And I'm really excited that a lot of you have used them and have found a way to pay down your debt and made it easy on you and you saved some money. I wish I had something like Upstart when I was in my late 20s, early 30s, paying 17 to 21% on BS credit cards. So here's what you got to do. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash honeydew. That's upstart.com slash honeydew. And don't forget to use my URL to let them know I sent you, all right? Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash honeydew today. Our next sponsor is MeUndies. Now, MeUndies believes that comfort is about more than what's touching your skin. It's about feeling comfortable in your skin. All right, you're a total badass. That's why MeUndies not only uses a sustainable, breathable, soft as heck fabric, but they also give you endless styles to choose from. It's total comfort inside and out. MeUndies offers you some classic colors all the way up to the ridiculous prints. It's all so you can fully express yourself in your own unique way. And I know we got a lot of bigger guys that always ask about merch and everything. Let me tell you, MeUndies are available in a range of sizes from extra small to 4XL, all right? They sent me some uh, pairs of them, and I love them. I'm a big guy on comfort in your drawers. You know what I'm saying? So I like boxer briefs. I used to wear those all the time. Boxers just weren't enough. And um, I'm always looking for something out there that's different and feels good and especially these days i'm only wearing sweats i don't wear jeans anymore right now me undies go perfect with everything all right so the other thing is you never need to leave your couch again with a me undies membership it's a monthly subscription that sends new pairs to your door and with site-wide savings and exclusive sales you'll automatically pay less for everything okay me undies has a great offer for you guys for any first-time purchasers, you get 15% off and free shipping, okay? MeUndies also has their problem-free philosophy. If you're not satisfied with any product for any reason, they'll refund or exchange it. No caveats, no questions, all right? To get your 15% off your first order and free shipping, go to MeUndies.com slash Honeydew. That's MeUndies.com slash Honeydew. Now. Let's get back to the do. You know what, though? There's so much shit in my childhood that was formative. Like, in, in, like memorizing those joke books, the truly tasteless, that was like, that was, you know, th again, third grade when I lived with my dad. And like, that's be that became who I was later. And then going to nightclubs with my dad, that's, yeah. that's clubs. And then, I love my dad had these great Sunday parties where all the Hungarians would come over and then they'd get fucking ripped. They'd get ripped and just do, you know, smoke whatever and get high and tell jokes. 
And I was like, dude, that's where, like, that's fucking cool. You know, these degenerate, like, guys, people missing finger knuckles, like yeah. these, these harder What's guys. What's that all about? Yeah, that guy's yeah. missing an arm over yeah. <laughs> yeah. We used to hang out with a guy like that, that. Uh, I didn't, this is embarrassing, but for years I had seen him at birthday parties and stuff. But I was always little, and I never paid him any mind. But for years I've seen him. And one day I'm older and we're playing, uh, we're at like a Memorial Day. We all, a bunch of us got together for a picnic. You know, I'm probably in like late high school or whatever, junior, senior. And we're playing ball at the park. And I start looking out. So I go to my brother. I'm like, he lost his arm. <laughs> my brother's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, this motherfucker's out there with a, you, he had a t-shirt on, but you could see it. This was clearly, you know, clearly fake. Yeah. And my brother's like, He's always had that. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, he's always had that. That's not new. I go, for 10 years, I haven't recognized a fake fucking arm. He's like, he's probably wearing a long sleeve. But yeah, it's always had that. I'm like, this is all fun. I was so embarrassed. Like, oh my God. That's the best though. Like those weird things. When did you lose your hand, man? Yeah. Like 30 years ago? Oh, shit, man. Did you ask him? <laughs> no, I almost did. But I said my brother like, motherfucker's missing a hand over here. Yeah, grown-ups with afflictions or weird stuff when you're a kid, it's so scary to you. Well, I realize, you realize, like, my daughter will take stuff in and she'll say something to me. Like, Stella will say, well, you said blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, fuck. Mm. And, which meant nothing to me and everything to her, you know? That's why you, words are powerful. You got to be careful with shit. I know, but... That, but, but it's not your fault. Like, I, I've said things to people and later they're like, you said that thing about... <laughs> Not trying or whatever, and I was like, I did. I'm a fucking idiot. Don't that's listen. That's how I felt that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, because so many moments they affect you, and they're not even they're throwaways. I don't. I always have. Okay, so this is like a dark, but kind of a, like a cool thing with my dad too. So uh, he would like to drink and sit in the dark and listen to really loud music, like Jimi Hendrix. So like you know, imagine like Canoga Park deep in the valley. And it's just my dad in the dark just drinking, and it's like, dun, 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 foxy lady. And like, you know, when you're a kid, you're like, what in the fuck, dude? You know? And I get up for like a glass of water, and my dad is just like jamming out. And, and then as I got older, and I started drinking or whatever, and I'd come home like 16 or 17, like ripped. And I would just sit down with him, hi, and, like, he didn't know that, but uh, maybe he did. I don't fucking know. And it was cool to, like, jam out with him the older I got. Like, I'm sure that's really not healthy. <laughs> um, it was like a, a – because he was – my dad is a very philosophical guy. And I, that's where I get a lot of my mannerisms and the thinking part of me was, like, his ability to just fucking sit and think in the dark and listen to Hendrix or whatever – um, I wish I, I, like I got to know my father as a person. Yeah. I knew my dad as a dad. Yeah. You know, I, oh, my dad died you. too. Well, he died too young. I was 16. He was oh. 42. Like, it would have been awesome to sit down now and go, you know, what, what the fuck were you doing before mom <laughs> and shit? You know, what <laughs> yeah. the fuck are you doing staying with two twin? You know, how are you doing this? How are you doing that? What is your take on this? What's your take on that? Like, who are you as a person? What do you like in a woman? You know, what do you like about this? What do you like about that? I wish I had mm. that opportunity to ask him those questions. Yeah. My dad told me all that, and I kind of wish I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I love you, Christine. Uh, you know, because, like, I remember the last time he and I went on vacation, we went to Club Med, which was originally a French swingers club. I don't know yeah, if you know yeah, that. Yeah. And, uh Anyway, now they let. How kids old are you in. then? Oh, we started doing that when I was a little. Oh, this was a girl. yearly thing or whatever. Oh, I grew up every summer in Mexico, practically going to these, uh, you know, club meds, and half the everybody's like French, and I'm running around the village with French kids, and my dad's getting ripped and you know banging shit, whatever. But uh, so the, you know, just like little shit, like. Uh, my dad is just gr like he'd be like the girl's got nice teeth, nice. Aunt. Oh no, that's what he said about my mother. He was I, he goes your mother, good looking. She had nice teeth, nice ass. I was like, that's it. Gross, dude. You know, <laughs> she's crazy. Not I thought she'd be a good mom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
No. <laughs> it stopped at the top of the list. Nice yeah. tits and ass. Nice yeah. dudes, nice ass. And then just like my dad's revulsion at Tom and my idea of a good time. Like Tom and I are chill. If we go on a vacation, it's to just a quiet hotel. Like my dad hates that. He's like, oh, so fucking quiet, fat people, fat, ugly American, no party, no dancing. Where is music? He's, he was what still is that way. Party, yeah. party, party. Yeah. yeah you, you know, like, ugh. it's weird to think that those are your parents. Like, do you ever think about like your mother? That's your mom, dude. And you were, I mean, we we're both raised by crazy moms. Did you ever think of that? Like, how was it that I was raised by that well, person? Well, it's funny because Stella right now is asking me about this. Like, I talk to her about my father all the time, and I talk, and she FaceTimes with my mom. She'll FaceTime with her, and um, she'll ask me. She's like, "Well, when you were Derek's age, like her brother's age, will you blah blah blah?" I'm like, "Well, um, your grand your grandfather was dead, and your grandma was already gone." And I try to move on. She's like, "Wait, yeah. what? Move on." <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what do you mean she was gone? I don't understand. I go, listen, I don't understand. All right, it's okay not to understand. But so we're having these conversations right now, and she's six about, mm. you know, she loves knowing about her family and her cousins and her uncles and how big it is and how many fam, how many cousins and uncles and aunts on her mom's side and on her dad's side and where they all live. Like she's so into that and FaceTiming with the ones that are closer in her age and stuff like that. So. Um, mm. It's interesting. She does ask good questions. So, yeah. So how do you, oh gosh, how do you explain having, so what the relationship you have now with your mother is like cordial, I imagine? Yeah, yeah. No, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. And, but I I told her long before, like, I'm not going to lie to Stella. Plus it's all here. At some yeah. point my daughter can listen to this shit. I don't have to say a word really, but um, I want her to know. I do want, listen. I'm I'm like you. I'm not raising my kid in this fucking super sensitive, you know, everyone has to get a trophy world. I'm not doing that. That's not the way the world fucking works. Okay. No. You, your little league might do that for you, but the universe <laughs> is gonna put its dick right in your fucking face. Okay. It doesn't give a it's fuck gonna about skull your particip- fuck it you. It is I know. Hard. I know. It doesn't give a fuck <laughs> no. about your participation trophy. Well matter of fact, it's gonna shove it up your ass <laughs> while it skull fucks you. Okay. That's what's yeah. gonna happen. Well, you know what drives me mad? <laughs> it doesn't give a oh, fuck. It makes me crazy right now that everybody is privileged in what they do. Like this makeup company is now shine your uniqueness. You're beautiful. It's like, no, not everybody has the gift of beauty. Not everybody has the gift of intelligence, the gift of of whatever they the don't. fuck. That's strength. what makes it a fucking gift. Yeah. <laughs> if everybody had it, nobody would be gifted. Nobody. <laughs> so why are we pumping this into everybody that you're special? You're. It's like you might be special in one fucking thing. But also, all the only person that needs to believe you're special is you. Is you? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, because no one else <laughs> even knows who the fuck you are. <laughs> no one cares. Let alone whether you're good at that or not. They're like, who? Who's who? who? No, no one. No one cares. I'm raising her that way. I told her like, <sighs> look, here's the deal. Not every kid has parents. Not every kid gets all these fucking toys. Not every kid gets all these things. So for us, it is if you want new clothes and it's time for new, you want new stuffed animals or whatever, you got to give. You got to give to get. So there are little boys and girls out there. I said, like me, when I was 16, I had no parents. I was your brother's age. Crazy. So there are kids out there that could use some T-shirts. They could use some pants. They could use some stuffed animals to cheer them up because they don't have a mom or a dad. So I'm not sugarcoating everyone lives the life you fucking live. You know what I mean? (laughs) Although sometimes when it's the co-parenting back and forth, she'll say, like, can I go to mom's or can I go to dad's? And it's like, look, man, your brother goes back and forth between his mom and dad. You know, I was raised separated your friends are that way like i hate to tell you this but it's kind of fucking normal you know more kids that are in split households than you do in you know married homes yeah of course and it becomes the norm is whatever you grow up with you don't know anything else my i I didn't even realize my dad was an alcoholic until tom told me like i knew it (laughs) Like three years ago. Yeah, like uh, I was like, yeah, he would drink a 12er every night. And Tom was like, that's that's not normal. You know that's not normal. But it's it was. It's normal for my dad. Yeah, and for me. 
And for me, and you were drinking like that. Too? Yeah, I was point? hammered. No, no, no. Oh my no, god! I mean, for me, like to see that oh, to and, see it. and watch, you know, he watch these games or whatever tennis, and he give me a little bit of beer, yeah, and you know, to drink with him, and but that's your, that's the norm. So, so you, it's wild. When you grow up seeing that, do you believe? Like we talked about, for you, you like the nightclub. For <laughs> me, wild. and the darkness. I, I, that's a big thing about comedy is I love the night. Yeah. I like the darkness. I like the comfort of being in the complete dark. Like, you know yes. where I really like to be? I love to be in that chair right next to the piano behind the stage in the main room of yeah, the comedy yeah, store yeah, where yeah, yeah. even if someone walks by you, they don't even see you. It's pitch black right there before I go on. I know like, what you're talking about. I'm really comfortable in those spaces. I don't mind coming out into the light for 60 minutes, but after <laughs> that, I'm like a roach. I want to go fucking back into my hole and not bother yeah. anybody and just get the fuck out of there. Yeah, I'm similar. You yeah. Know? I like to hole up. But at what? it's funny, I just did my first show in a year in Dallas and I had the weirdest reaction. I came out on stage and I wasn't nervous, which is weird. I was just laser focused like a fucking serial killer or whatever, like a assassin. I was focused. And I came out and I just saw the darkness and the light and the nachos and the fat guy sitting with his fat friend and the girl with the tits out and the <laughs> you know and the smells yeah. and the sounds and the in the drunks, and I started crying. I, you cry? Yeah. I Because you were so happy, overjoyed, or what? That's the thing. I don't cry. I'm not sure yet. I haven't really gone over it with my shrink yet. I. It was overwhelming. I think because I was so, I was content. I was like, this is the part of me that's been gone, and this is the darkness in me that needs to be acknowledged. Otherwise, I'd get really out of balance. You know, the, the darkness that we carry from honey doing for the first 17 years, 18 years of your life, you know, that it's not that I, I'm completely cured from therapy. Or 40. Huh? Or 40. 40. <laughs> right. You, you carry these stories and they, they're a part of you. No, they don't lead your life. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever be, I don't think there's a cure for what we went through. No. I think there's a way to, there's an understanding and there's a way to deal and then there's a way to move forward. That's yeah. what there is. That's not really a cure uh, for what we went through. Um, but I, I, I can totally understand what you mean because no matter what I've gone through at my lowest, even when I was splitting with Stella's mom and like I was like, oh my God, I'm losing my kid half the time, like mm. at my fucking lowest – on stage, whether it's a 15-minute set or an hour set, none of it enters my head. Yeah. None of it. It's the only yeah. pure place. I even find myself from time to time in a podcast drifting into my own thought because of what someone else is saying. And I'm yeah. like, oh, I've done that or oh, I yeah. know what they're talking about. You don't have that interaction on mm -mm. in stand-up. It's just you. And it's the only like clean place where the only thoughts that are in my mind are what I want to discuss with these or share with these people. Yeah. And the connection. No. Yeah. No. I have the similar. It's probably why I enjoy it. And the connection with people. Yeah. I missed that. I didn't realize connecting with strangers is that important. You didn't realize how social you were until this <laughs> all happened? Yeah. Yeah. Because you're pretty antisocial. Yeah. Tom and I both are like, yeah, we're you fine. You guys get in fine. and get out. I mean, I do the same thing too, though. I don't hang around too much. Well, no. Like networking is a big part of this business. This is why I'm where I'm at. But uh, <laughs> I just don't want to fucking do it. Talk no. to people. Like here, you know where to find me. You, know, <laughs> you really want to talk to me if you got that kind of time. I get it. I'm right over here. You know, it's funny when you say that your mom was calling you a piece of shit and stuff. Like, my mom, my parents never just flat out were like, you know, you were a piece of shit. It was more like, like covert, like, okay, like, I remember one time I got straight A's on my report card in fourth grade and I got one B. My mother spent an hour lecturing me on how that B could become an A minus in no time. And that, that's a phrase too. This B here could become an A in no time. <laughs> No, well, if it takes no time, then make it an A, bitch, bitch right now. I'll fucking do it right now. <laughs> yeah, and that that kind of stuff for you're like, wait a minute, but what about those other A's? Like I These become B's in no time. <laughs> I know. You know what I'm saying? It was so that kind of like, wow. And then you learn not to ask for help because you're like, it's not gonna come. Do you remember when you realized that some adults are fucking stupid? 
Okay, and here's what I mean. I grew up as a child at first just thinking everyone older than me knew and was smarter than me because they were older than me. But at some point, I would talk to some adults, probably middle school, and I'd be like, oh, my God, I'm I'm smarter than you. (laughs) How's that possible that I am smarter than you? I'm aware of it. Yeah. And you have three kids. Yeah. And I am smarter than your dad, and I'm in eighth grade. Yeah, that grownups don't have their stuff together. Yeah, not everyone has it together. Like, when do you realize, when do you remember? Because I, I know Stella asked me some questions, and I say, I don't know. She's like, I thought you knew everything. I'm like, yeah, I don't. That's no. what kids think, that parents know everything. I don't know everything. Let's look it up together. Let's learn, oh, okay, all right, you know. I tell Ellis the same thing, that, hey, just because someone's older than you doesn't mean they have all the answers. Or any of them. No, they yeah. don't know. You know, oddly enough, I think the first time I realized adults were humans was when I was... That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yes. I had this great PE teacher. I hated PE. Ninth grade, I stopped. I decided to stop going to school, basically. I just decided to stop going. I didn't like it, and I was in this Did you graduate? School. Well, yeah. So here's what happened. I, I didn't like the school. I was getting in fights, and I was failing, basically. And I was like, I'm not going to go. I'm just going to stop going. So I just would pretend to walk to school and then go get high at my boyfriend's house or go to the mall or whatever. Eventually, I realized I wanted to go back to school, and um, my mother was like, do you want to go to this nice private school? And that was a really good thing she had done. Like, thank God. She goes, but you need to have straight Ds at least. You have, you got to, we can't get you in unless you're at least at a D level. So the one fail I had was PE because I just flat out was like, go fuck your mom, I'm goth. I did my makeup this morning. Yeah. You think I'm going to fucking come to school? Yeah, fuck you, dude. And I went to him. Turn these Fs into Ds in no time. Yeah, in no time. <laughs> in no time. I was 14 years old and I went to this teacher. He was the he had a mustache. I remember that. I never really talked to him that much. And I started crying and I was like, look, this is my one chance to turn my life around. Like I was into drugs and I was fucking crazy at that year. And I'm like, I think I want to change my life. I want to graduate. I want to go to college. If you change my F to a D, you will help me change my life. And he stopped and I he like he goes, oh. Drop and give me fifty. No. <laughs> I was like, no, but I was smoking at the time. Like, I can do a 15 minute mile. How about that? 15 minute mile. Yeah. yeah. 20 minute mile. And so I never forget this that he turned his back to me. He kind of like put his head down, like, fuck. And he thought about it and he's like, okay. And I was like, whoa, I didn't realize the power of A, asking, and like that that was a human being. Like the teacher was a person that felt bad for me. And like, but also for a child to open up like that and say, yo, I want to be better and do better. Like, how many kids say that in high school? And to to get that opportunity laid in your lap, I mean, I would at least said, walk four fucking laps around this gym and I'll do (laughs) it. But I wouldn't have just said, yeah, for nothing. But I'd have been like, you know, can you can you turn in your gym uniform? You know, something. <laughs> I'd have made you do something. I was can so you keep f- score at the basketball I game know. this weekend? We're our scorekeeper. But set. I was so far gone. He could see, he could see the decline. Yeah, I, so he I did had, the right thing. Yeah, and he got and I got into Catholic school and I straightened my life out and I went on to have a productive life. But thank God, thank God, my mother had that inclination to put me in a nice Catholic school. Like, hey, dude, the nuns will straighten you out, and they did. I liked it. I liked that structure. I liked their rules. It was like, it's what I needed, those boundaries, those, like someone giving a shit, because at home it was like. I mean, I know a lot of people do go to the military for that reason. Yeah. They're they're just, you know, a wild child and they end up going there for structure and, you know, leadership, all the things you lack when you have, you know, no parents or parents like that. Yeah, my mom was just preoccupied with her new husband and they were never, you weren't a sports girl though. So you never really had coaches that were influential or anything like that. No, stand up. Stand up was my sport. Stand up was the thing that taught me resilience and keep trying and fuck you, fuck your feelings, go back. Fuck your feelings. Yeah. I don't, you think that's funny? That is (laughs) dog shit. Yeah. Oh, you think it's good? They'll tell you. They'll tell you. They'll let you know. Fuck your feelings. Fuck your feelings. Fuck your feelings. And that what it takes to survive and to succeed is is that persistence. I mean, fuck you to get back up and do it again after you're bombing until you get good at it. Like, man, it's not riding a bike. Mm -mm. You know, you need people to watch and and laugh. (laughs) You need that. That's a big part. (laughs) That's wild. a big part of it, yeah. It's wild. So I didn't learn 
academia taught me some of that. I studied philosophy. I loved it. And I, that I fell in love with when I got what to college. What did you take from that? What did you like about it? Life. A, a, finally, a subject that I was like, this is it. I need the meaning of life. What is this? And I just fell in love with the just the how hard it was. And there was no women doing it. There was like three other girls that were philosophy majors. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to fucking fuck you. I'm not stupid because I went and thought I was a dipshit because I failed out of ninth grade, you know? And then I was like, I'll show you, mom, dad. And of course, they didn't give a shit. Look now, though. <laughs> I'm, you use, they still don't give a fuck. But you use that. Yeah. I know you use that. Yeah. That you have to use that philosophy. Yeah. Like this show also has been really, you know, in a way, a, a great thing because I'm listening to other people and you go, oh my God. I don't have it so fucking bad. Maybe I don't have no. it so fucking bad. You know, and you're like, but I. <laughs> you wish, had it way worse than yeah, me. But an in my at circle of people back then, we were the we were the worst. <laughs> you know what I mean? If I could have just met other worsts back then, yeah. I think it would have really fucking helped me out. Like, yeah. no one could relate to having no parents. There was only like one or two kids that had a, a a parent die, but the other parent loved them and stayed there and was with them. You know, shit like that. Like. I don't know a lot of people that were raised or even helped raised by their grandpa, uh, a grandmom or when we grew up or anything like that. So there was no one outside of my brothers to talk to about this shit. Even our other own cousins weren't, you know, this didn't happen to them. So just no one. But if you could meet a community of fucking honeydews, yeah, it's uh, it would it changes your life to realize, oh my god, I am not only am I not alone. Like holy shit, I could deal Everyone. with my problems today. Yeah, you know that sort of thing. Well, especially a thing with my situation, I was an only child. My mom was borderline. My dad's an alcoholic, and I was between those two households. So there's a lot of secrets. There was a lot of. I, I'm an alien. I must so be an alien. Secrets. Yeah. So many. Something's secrets. wrong with me. And to learn as an adult, like, oh, it's it's all them, and and other people deal with the same stuff. No one taught you. Just don't have the, the vocabulary as a child to be like, hey, I think something's wrong at my right. house. But I was really fortunate that we had financial resources. Thank God, my mom could like throw money at me and send me to a nice a Catholic school. That's fucking <sighs> shit. If she'd have married huge. for love, Christine, I know. <laughs> She was fucked right, up. And she didn't marry for your money. Children are okay. <laughs> that second marriage that? was all money. That yeah. was the one. Oh, that second one. Okay. Yeah. 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 So it's crazy. Wait, how, can I talk about your mom though? Mm -hmm. It's like, so what? Can, I know you still talk to her, so I don't want to tell me to fuck off. If it's, so what do, do we do we know what what's going on? Is she is she diagnosed with? I I asked or? her straight up. I said, you know, I've been to countless therapists, and you know, all these years, I haven't wanted to give you an ounce of credit for anything. But the one thing I could say, when every fucking person and therapist who had any interest in this asked, was, did you do drugs or alcohol? And I said I had to say no, and she's like, I didn't. I go, which makes it worse? I think, at least. And I don't want to say it like that, but with an alcohol or drug or something, you can point to mm -hmm. this being sort of the catalyst of this problem, and but none of that there. So there has to be some... Mental. Yeah, of there course. has to be. But you also have to go get that help and yeah. figure out what that is. Someone else can't do that for you, so... Well, because now as a parent, I think especially as a mother, as a mom... To, to not be there for your kids is so against the wiring, the primal wiring. Mother nature all the way. Yeah. It is. So the wires have to be crossed. Yes. There's no way. Or disconnected. Fuck yeah. Fuck awesome. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> my mom's wires were fucking... <laughs> she would kick me out and go live with my dad for like a year. I'm like, what? Yeah. Yeah, no. I Crazy. You know, I just was telling Stella about that last night. I go, you know, she's like, well, when did you start talking to grandma again? I go, when you were born. I go, two mm -hmm. years after you were born, you're the reason that all of this is happening. And I try to explain it to her. Like, I'm, I can't, I don't want to set her up for one thing. And then when she's 10, she finds out all this other shit. Like, I'm being honest with you up front and how I deal with it now. We talk. And sometimes after two minutes, she's like, dad, play Justin Bieber. You know, she's done. She doesn't give a fuck. She's done. You know, she's like, I heard enough of this bullshit. But then she'll ask a little more later, and she pieces it all together. And I know she remembers because she'll say, well, you said this and this. I'm like, damn, I did say that. So it's pretty interesting. I, um, like, in no way do I want her to feel sorry for me or anything like that. I want her to understand that 
you got it fucking good, kid. You got it good. You have two parents who love the shit out of you. You have two grandmothers who love the shit out of you. Everyone loves you. You know, if God forbid something happened, you'd be taken care of, you know, all that. She's got it good. Yeah. Um, Thank God. And she'll never appreciate that until she's older because you can't at that age. You don't even know what that is. Mm. But, um, you know, I it, it, it fuels me to be a better person person you know fuck parents like i'm i'm already a parent that that's the easy (laughs) that's just given to you you know i'm just trying to be a better person and more tolerant i'm like patient i'm trying to be patient i'm not always patient with the you know bugging the shit out of me about stuff try to teach you about um you know accountability we're on time if we say we're going to do something we do it we keep our word you said you promise you got to do it don't don't Fucking pinky swear, hair swear me. That's from trolls. And, and then <laughs> oh, not yeah. do it. And then not do it. Don't hair swear me and not do it. Yeah. No fucking way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But and they... we're going to help other people. We're here to help yeah, other people. Yeah, yes. You know, that sort of thing. So she'll, I'll go in a room and she'll have a whole pile of like shit. And she'll be like, I want to donate this. I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. But then I get rid of it because she'll, the next day she'll be like, I was thinking. I'm like, yeah, I bet you were. They go <laughs> back into that box <laughs> and they're like, actually, I, I can still play, play with that. that. You're like, just don't, like, just don't, nah, don't, 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 go, go. Out of here. That's true. The, I mean, that's like the whole purpose now as a comedian and as a, parent as a human is to give back to be intrinsically valuable to other people like even doing this show someone's gonna listen to it and go like oh my god really like her mom was a borderline or her dad was an alcoholic and she's fine yeah it's fine but i did go to a decade of therapy yes that's the thing you gotta put the work in it's not just one day poof you know recently uh, um a friend uh of ours broke up with her boyfriend they're younger I said, well, how old is he? And she's like 28. But, you know, you, blah, blah. I go, first of all, I, I'm i 47. I got 20 <laughs> years of therapy and self-work. Like, I, I, I would have probably been the same way as he. Yeah. You know, you can't compare two people like that. And don't fucking be throwing me into your mix. No. You know, do like, Ryan. That, no, Ryan's <laughs> fucked up all the – I have batted zero in serious <laughs> relationships. Zero. <laughs> Okay, why would you want advice from me? Oh. Zero, right? So trying to be a better person, trying to work on all that shit. And accountability, I teach my daughter about accountability and gratitude. Like I always say there's no excuse. There's no good excuse for bad manners. Like fuck that shit. You're going to say please. You're going to say thank oh, you. Yes. Don't be telling me go get this shit. You go get it. Oh, what's the word? Magic word. The other word. day was funny. I didn't know, but I was on um, – She's like, can we call mom? So I go, yeah. And she Zooms her mom. Well, her mom's at work in this little studio. And uh, we didn't know there was other people in the room because they mm. weren't on camera. And um, Stella said, let me tell her. And she goes, Stella. I go, hey, you don't talk to me like that. And she's like, hey, there's people in here buying. And I, Stella <laughs> got so embarrassed. I mean, you just yelled like that in front of your mother on her work camera. And all those people saw it. She's like, I don't, I don't <laughs> like that. I go, yeah, feels doesn't feel good, does it? Don't be yelling at me like that on, on camera. What are no. you crazy? You got to teach them all that stuff. Mm-mm. Those little humans don't know shit. No. They don't know anything. And you think about like the lack of patience our parents had. Like I don't think my – they didn't stop to just explain the little stuff to you, you know. You Fuck no. Grow the, you grow up the hard way. You just teach yourself. You raise yep. yourself. Like, oh, man. I'm, oh, shit. Yeah, if I do this and this happens, that's <laughs> happened 10 times. <laughs> yeah. I think I got it. <laughs> or, or even television. I learned a, I learned so much from watching like sitcoms like Three's Company or mm-hmm. like Charles in Charge. Like, oh, everybody's nice to each other. I remember thinking like, this is crazy that people are just nice to each other mm-hmm. on TV all the time. I thought that was bullshit, that that didn't exist in real life. I'm like, what are these people doing where they touch each other? Yeah. Like <laughs> rap or what is that? Oh, hugs. Those are hugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that is. What's Charles over here doing while he's in charge? He's hugging somebody. I know. It's, uh, I know. Well, I love you. I love you too. You're and I'm best. glad you're in a great place. And thank well, you for coming in here. Thanks. Do you want to uh, plug your dates one more time I again, please? But plug my dates. But plug your dates one more <laughs> time. February, February 25th through 27th, the, the Houston Improv, ChristinaPOnline.com for tickets. And then I also go to Des Moines. Des Moines, and then there's other tickets, other places I'm doing. The Say Red it again, Christina P. Online.com, Christina P. Online.com. Listen to your mom's house. Listen to where my mom's at. You know, the Christina P. on Instagram. 
all that good stuff. Well, thank you for everything. You thank know, you. I love I, you. I love you too. You're the best. And um, I appreciate you guys. Thank I'm you. I'm going to miss you, mm-hmm. but I'm coming down to see you. You coming up in May? Up? <laughs> That's down? Oh Texas is down, Christy. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna, sure. Are you all going to? Is there a Texas of north of here? There's northern Texas. That's where we are. <laughs> northern Texas. But I'll tell you what. I'm gonna wash my pussy for you. Please. I don't want to smell nobody. Stinky pussy. Well, I still can't smell, so I'll let you know. Oh. If I can't, I'll be like, hey, just keep your pussy as is, Christina. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I love you. Uh, as always, Ryan Sickler on all social media. RyanSickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week. <laughs>